Alrighty, I'm back with another video on the worst dishes from Kitchen Nightmares. And this restaurant right here promised to deliver a feast fit for a king, but what were they actually serving up? Well, let's just say that not even a peasant would take too kindly to it. The restaurant was owned by Dr. Morris and her son Keon, who was officially listed as the manager. But Dr. Morris never let him take on the role fully. My son is the manager, but we don't necessarily see things eye to eye. And it wasn't just him. She didn't even allow the chef or kitchen staff to operate independently. This meant that she decided everything that happened in the restaurant. This also included the menu, which the chef had absolutely no control over. For someone to expect you to do a job and then they keep stepping in and not allowing you to do it. To make things even worse, Dr. Morris was so deluded that she believed she was perfect and didn't need anyone's opinion. Anyway, fast forward to when Chef Ramsay arrived, he was excited to order some fresh and hot Jamaican food. After scanning through two huge menus, he finally settled on Jamaican patties and a special dish that was listed on the menu. Basically, it was jerk chicken marinated in a secret sauce, and when I say secret, I mean really secret. You have to listen to what the server Matt said about it. The owner pretty much does everything. The chef doesn't even know the secret behind the sauce. No. Just think about that. This restaurant actually featured a dish that the head chef knew nothing about. So much for being a head chef, right? Ramsay was about to wrap things up when he came across another dish, an oxtail stew, which was priced at a hefty $20. As Chef Ramsay waited for his order, he looked around the soulless restaurant and claimed that it looked like an office that lacked any charm. But the famous chef received more surprises than he bargained for. Meanwhile, in the kitchen, the situation worsened, with Dr. Morris constantly nagging the chefs and hindering their work. Let's go. They're, they're going. They can't go any faster. Are you working on this? Yes, Dr. Morris. Somehow, the chef sent out the first dish, the Jamaican patties, which had a dreadful sauce. As for the patties, they were even worse. Pastry's raw. Soggy pile of dough. They would kidnap me if I served that in Jamaica right now. Wow, things aren't looking very good here. When Chef Ramsay was served the jerk chicken, he was disgusted by the way the food looked, and guess what? It tasted exactly the way it looked. Chef Ramsay at this point was losing his mind. Nasty. Not an ounce of seasoning there. How's our signature dish? Bland as And you know what Dr. Morris had to say? She criticized Ramsay by saying that he didn't know the real taste of Jamaican food. He doesn't eat Jamaican food every day. I eat it every day. But let's see what some Jamaicans had to say. While one viewer agreed that they occasionally reheat food, another claimed that every restaurant in Jamaica cooks fresh food daily. And in reference to Dr. Morris, several viewers believed that she was incredibly deluded. But wait, let's not jump to any conclusions before tasting this last dish, the oxtail stew. Once Chef Ramsay tried it, he found it to be very bland and full of fat. Overall, this is what he thought of it. What a mess. $20. Chef Ramsay then tried to explain to Dr. Morris that she was the one who was sinking her ship, but the owner failed to understand this. By the end of the service, Ramsay was so disgusted that he only had one thing left to say. Madam, I'm really sorry, but you've lost the plot. While Dr. Morris served subpar food that was overpriced, this next restaurant staff despised the food that they served. While one waitress described the food as a hot mess, another server couldn't even stomach the food that he was serving. Turns out, the horrible dishes were just one part of the problem. Turns out, this was one hell of a depressing episode. I'm referring to the time when Chef Ramsay traveled all the way to Oakhurst, New Jersey to assist Mike, the overwhelmed owner of the restaurant Mike and Nelly's. The restaurant, which opened in 1996, was a lifelong dream of two men named Nellie Farber and his son Mike. Everything was going pretty great until the family was hit with a particular tragedy. The untimely demise of a loved one shook things up so much that Mike was struggling to manage the restaurant all by himself. Unfortunately, Mike had allowed the restaurant to deteriorate. Pretty bad. Since my grandpa died, the restaurant's been neglected. And the worst thing is that Mike was in denial and was unwilling to accept any help. People, they don't come here for atmosphere. They come here for food. And the food here, I believe, is great. Honestly, Ramsay was presented with one of the toughest challenges he's had to face yet. And, well, it looked like he would have to struggle hard to overcome Mike's stubbornness and get past him. When the famous chef arrived at the restaurant, he was greeted with an awful smell that everyone seemed to be immune to. It's clear that this restaurant has been neglected for years, and the interior was just as bad to look at. I don't know how this man could bring himself to eat there, but I could tell you that he was extremely disappointed with the menu. Is that, is that? I don't know. That's not a urine stain, man. I don't think so. No. I'm pretty sure it's probably coffee. First of all, it wasn't in good condition, and second, the menu had no identity. It wasn't clear if it was a fine dining restaurant or Italian. 
Anyway, Ramsay finally ordered the linguine with shrimp sauce, chicken Murphy, and steak Nelly. Finally, thanks to the server, Chef Ramsay was able to find the source of the strange smell, the carpets. It's filthy, disgusting, it's full of mold. It's worse over there. <laughs> now, the first order to arrive was the linguine with shrimp sauce. The dish was absolutely unappealing to the eyes, but how was the taste? Let's hear it from Chef Ramsay himself. It was gross. Yeah, it's bland. It's just, the I mean, sauce is bland. Yeah, everything's watery and it's horrible. And when the server walked back to the kitchen with Chef Ramsay's feedback, we got to see Mike's stubbornness firsthand. I don't know what he's talking about. I am a perfectionist. I will never put out food unless it's right. You know what? I completely agree with this user's comment right here. Mike was actually in a state of delusion and wasn't ready to step into reality. However, would Ramsay be able to help him in his restaurant? Well, let's go over the rest of the dishes before that. Quite surprisingly, the waitress hesitated to serve the chicken Murphy to Chef Ramsay. Guess why? It's embarrassing. It looks like a stew gone bad. Well, why would anyone try to taste something like that? But since Chef Ramsay was on a mission, he needed to taste it to give his opinion. So with a lot of effort, he went ahead and dug in, and this is how it turned out to be. It's overcooked. Just wet, soggy, and just tasteless. Ramsay was already over and done with the tasting and had no hope for the restaurant. However, he decided to just tank through the last dish, the steak Nelly, and well, this is how it turned out to be. Wow, that just tastes like burnt charcoal. Chef Ramsay literally hated all the dishes, but Mike wasn't ready to accept that his food wasn't only pathetic, but unhygienic. Damn, who knew this guy's food was way worse than the carpet? However, this next restaurant would have done a better job if the owners focused more on their business than their personal issues. Because what they served Chef Ramsay was downright unacceptable. Now, let's head over to a restaurant in Brooklyn that opened in 2003 called Mojito Cuban Cuisine. The restaurant was run by a couple named Marcelo and Catalina, who started things off with a lot of passion. But somewhere down the line, things started to go south real fast. Not only was their marriage now on the rocks, but their business was failing. Considering how Marcelo worked in the kitchen and Catalina took care of the front of house, the couple made the staff's lives a living hell. The pair had already split up and were neck deep in $300,000 of debt when they turned to Chef Ramsay for some much needed help and guidance. Considering the fact that this was the only Cuban restaurant in Brooklyn, it's surprising how they failed to capture the market in the first place. It either had to do something with the menu or with the chef, right? Chef Ramsay was determined to find out and was shocked by the state of the menu and the decor. Things were all over the place like a garage sale. Marcelo, however, was convinced that his food would wow Ramsay. But let's see what actually happened. The first thing Ramsay tried was the chicken soup, and this is how it turned out to be. It's cold. How silly! How could they make such a stupid mistake? Ramsay then moved on to the black beans and rice, which was super salty, and this led to a massive argument in the kitchen. It was so loud that Chef Ramsay could hear them from the dining area. Okay, now that's awkward. Marcelo then tried to get rid of Catalina to focus on his tilapia a little better. Now, do you think Chef Ramsay would like the fish? No, and I'm definitely not getting any food from this restaurant for sure. Because, well, nobody wants to eat something as hideous as this. Fish is not cooked. Oh, it's really not. Meanwhile, any feedback that Chef Ramsay sent in led to a huge verbal spat between Marcelo and Catalina. And I think this estranged couple was better off away from each other along with the business as well. It wasn't doing any good to anyone. Not them, not their staff, and definitely not their customers. But this next restaurant that claimed to serve fresh food ended up serving really funky dishes to Chef Ramsay. However, wait till you hear how and when the food was prepared. Back in 82, a place called Davide opened up in Boston's Little Italy. And well, it was the real deal when it came to fine dining. Fast forward 15 years and the joint was picked up by two brothers named Frank and Anthony. At first, they were killing it. The place was packed and everyone was happy. But then, turns out, one of the brothers was stealing money to feed his drug habit. And this started a whole cycle of rehab, abuse, and recovery. At the time of filming, the owners were a million dollars in debt, the family was falling apart, and the restaurant was on its last legs. Could Chef Ramsay save the restaurant in time? When Ramsay sat down to taste the food, he was impressed with the Caesar salad being made right at the table. But then, he was let down when the salad took 8 minutes to make and the taste was anything but pleasant. Because it's soaking wet, so all the dressings just run off it because the lettuce is soaking wet. Next up, it was time for the eggplant and this is how Chef Ramsay reacted. Soggy. 
hasn't been fried or cooked long enough. It's spongy and horrible. While Ramsay could determine from the taste alone that the eggplant was old, nobody would have expected it to be weeks old. And guess what? Frank even admitted it. That's putrid. Next up, it was time for some lobster ravioli, which obviously wasn't homemade. And well, this is how Chef Ramsay reacted to it. That's nasty. I mean, even the waiter felt betrayed when the head chef said that the pasta was bought in. Had it not been for Chef Ramsay's timely intervention, this restaurant would have been kaput. Now, when I think about Italian food, I almost immediately start feeling hungry. But the food at this next restaurant left much to be desired. In Season 7, Chef Ramsay visited Bella Luna in Eastern Pennsylvania. Owned by Rosario Scolo, the Italian-themed restaurant was purchased in 2010 for her two sons, Maurizio and Gianfranco. And it only made sense to do so because one of her sons had always dreamt of owning a restaurant. I'm specifically referring to John Franco, who was a culinary school graduate. While he did have the passion, he didn't exactly have the finances to own his own restaurant. John Franco was the head chef of the restaurant, and his brother Maurizio took over the position of bar manager. And considering how the restaurant was literally handed down to them on a golden plate, the siblings could have definitely done a better job. His chicken's burnt. What do you mean his chicken is burnt? Does that look like burnt chicken? Please. Oh. I don't know what kind of culinary school Gianfranco graduated from, but the customers never really liked anything that he made. This restaurant might have been the owner's dream, but it was the customer's nightmare. For one reason or the other, food kept returning to the kitchen with complaints. And well, this isn't a sign of a good restaurant. However, they weren't just any complaints, but really dreadful ones. That's or not. I just don't think this is worth coming back to ever. Meanwhile, Maurizio and Rosario, instead of getting down to the problem and addressing it, being John Franco, preferred to take the back seat. They somehow believed that the locals would rather have frozen and microwave food rather than freshly prepared meals. And Chef Ramsay couldn't believe his ears. So you're saying they'd be more upset with fresh as opposed to frozen? Yeah. Come on, I don't think any customer would dislike fresh food. This meant that somebody here was screwing up, but they couldn't figure out who. What are we doing wrong? That's my question to myself. What am I doing wrong? Gianfranco believed that he was the best only because he was trained under the best. Now, one viewer of the show rightfully commented saying, just being passionate is enough to start a business. But it's what you learn from others along the way that will help you run it. The only experience the head chef had was an internship he did in Manhattan after graduating, and clearly it wasn't enough. However, the food wasn't the only problem. What Tracy, the manager, had to say about the restaurants is truly appalling. Bella Luna, um, personally, I think it looks like a morgue. Gosh, that was harsh. But let's see how Chef Ramsay found the food that Gianfranco rated a solid 8 out of 10. To test the culinary graduate skills, Chef Ramsay ordered a veal salt and boca, a penne alla vodka, and mussels marinara. When Chef Ramsay received the veal, it looked dreadful. But did it taste any good? Well, I do have my fingers crossed right now, but this is how it turned out. Chewy, but it's been beating the crap out of. <laughs> Disgusting. The veal was battered, overcooked, and dusted with so much flour that it looked completely caked on. Dusted with flour? See all this? Yes. See this here? That, that's gunge, that's just raw flour. What's even more baffling is that Rosario didn't care about Chef Ramsay's feedback. Back in the kitchen, she said that if the culinary genius didn't like the veal, there was nothing she could do about it. Because, wait for it, Rosario firmly believed that that's how it was made and she wouldn't change anything about it. Then why did she even call Chef Ramsay? To give him a taste of her pompousness? Ramsay, all the while, had no idea that Rosario was actually disregarding his presence in every way, shape, or form. So he went ahead with trying the next dish, the penne alla vodka. While the veal was drenched in plain flour, the pasta was drowned in sauce and was cold. Did they maybe mistake Chef Ramsay's order for soup? I mean, what was with all that sauce? Don't expect much from Chef Ramsay's feedback because this is how he found it. The sauce is disgusting and that is gross. Does Chef not cook pasta? Now, why do I feel like that's not how fresh pasta should look like? Well, that's because it wasn't. While Chef Ramsay was trying his hardest not to throw up, back in the kitchen, John Franco revealed something crazy. What, what did we give him? Penne I cooked yesterday. I'm sure there's a difference. Wondering what they're mumbling about? Let me break it down for you. The watery, saucy penne that was served to Chef Ramsay wasn't even fresh. Huh, why am I not surprised at all? The dish was actually cooked the previous day, and I can't imagine in my wildest dreams serving something like that to a world-famous chef. Why couldn't they just tell him it wasn't available instead of making a fool of themselves like this? 
What's more disappointing was that John Franco wasn't even aware of it, and he hadn't even tasted the dish before sending it out. But let's get back to the pasta. It wasn't just watery, it was overcooked, bland, and had a ton of garlic in it. However, Chef Ramsay had a better way of describing it. You have to see Rosario's expression when Tracy walked to the kitchen with the famous chef's feedback. He said it was like baby vomit. Baby vomit. Wow. I think Ramsay was actually being kind when he said that. Anyway, it's now time for the last dish, the mussels marinara. Mussels are usually served in a bowl, and the portions are often pretty generous. But what Chef Ramsay received was really disappointing. There were barely eight mussels, and they were served on a plate. Like, who does that? The famous chef was sorely disappointed. That has to be the tightest portion of mussels I've ever seen in my entire life. Imagine paying $10 for a few mussels that were lazily thrown on a plate. Were they trying to scam their customers? Well, of course they were, because this is how they tasted like. They taste frozen. Can you just check with the chef, because they are so chewy. You heard that right, they were frozen. It looks like the owners didn't even know the difference between fresh and frozen food. How could you claim something that you aren't even following? Jeff Ramsey had to set things straight, so he headed right into the kitchen, and let me tell you, he wasn't happy. You've got more chance winning the lottery than you have becoming a success here. However, at this next restaurant, everything was god-awful. But you know what? Not only did Chef Ramsay have a heart attack at this restaurant, but you might too after what I'm gonna cover. You guys can't do your job right. You shut the up, right? In season six, Chef Ramsay visited Sam's Mediterranean Kebab Room in Monrovia, California. Sam Najjar and his family owned the restaurant that Sam worked as a busboy at since 1982. In 1997, Sam decided to buy it. But was that really a good decision? Well, you're gonna find out real soon. While business was booming in the beginning, it eventually went downhill. To reduce his costs, Sam sacked his staff in hopes of getting through this financial crisis. I don't know how much the firing helped, but during the time of filming, he was around $70,000 in debt. The only staff that the restaurant had was Sam's family, his wife, and children. The business was now entirely handled by the family alone. And before you assume things were going smoothly, let me tell you that all of them hated working there. They would often get into arguments and didn't even bother giving attention to the customers around them. You guys are taking the food without the salad? No. How is the chicken cold if we take it right off the grill? It wasn't cold. She it was... came and told me. Sam's children worked long shifts around 12 hours every single day. And when I say every day, they're working seven days a week with no breaks. You could imagine why none of the children wanted to work there anymore. They had their own dreams but couldn't pursue them since they were stuck at the restaurant trying to support Sam. To make things much worse, Sam didn't even pay his children any wages since he couldn't afford it. He justified the lack of wages by letting them stay at his house for free. This could easily make him a selfish parent, but was he the only one at fault? This was turning out to be a vicious cycle, and one of the viewers correctly described how it worked. Sam's kids couldn't move out because they didn't have money, they didn't have money because they weren't paid, and they couldn't get a job since that would mean they would lose a place to stay. Well, you could definitely hear the desperation in Imad, Sam's son, and the head chef's voice in this next clip. I kind of want to start my life, but I'm not able to because, you know, I have to stick here with my dad. It's a sad state of affairs indeed. But what's even more depressing is the quality of the food at this godforsaken restaurant. For lunch, Chef Ramsay ordered a vegetable combo, lamb shank, yido, and the top sirloin steak and shrimp scampi cooked in medium rare. As soon as the kitchen received his order, the family started arguing. Don't worry, man. All the customers, including Ramsey, were able to hear this argument, and that's not what you'd imagine fine dining would be like. Stop, be quiet. Those people are looking over here. Anyway, let's move on to the first dish that came out, which was the vegetable combo. With just one look at the dish, you could say that there was nothing appetizing about it. And when Ramsey tasted it, he immediately started to question whether the eggplant in the dish was fresh. But was Chef Ramsay making things up? Of course not. Turns out the eggplant was canned and Ramsay was left dismayed. Canned eggplant? No, that's gnarly. That's just dreadful. Overall, Chef Ramsay found the dish to be way too bland and you could say that he was already dreading the next dish to come. When the yiro arrived, the dish looked so dry that you wouldn't even want to taste it. Despite that, the famous chef did try it and he was struck with the same question. Was it fresh or not? Jeff Ramsey was let down yet again, and this is what he had to say about the dish. It doesn't even taste. No taste? I thought it shouldn't, 
Enjoy. I'm not giving out any prizes for guessing that the meat was frozen and simply heated in the microwave before being plated. Why would anyone want to come and pay premium prices to eat dry and tasteless food? I know I wouldn't. After two disappointing dishes, would the third one save the day? The final dish to be served was the lamb shank, and this is how it turned out to be. It looks anemic, the color's dreadful, and it just tastes like bland, boiled lamb. What do you think? Was it frozen or not? Whatever the case may be, the relationship between the family members had grown so cold that it would put anything to shame. Why don't you take over? I should. Get then out. Do it. If you don't want to get out, do it. If you don't want to get out, just... It didn't take much for the siblings to get into a full-blown fight. As much as I felt bad for them, I think Jamal was the most annoying of them all. He wasn't helpful at all. The only thing he did was create trouble by starting arguments and complaining about everything. You guys can't do your job right. You shut the and it's not just me. Several viewers picked up on this and slammed him for being a useless prick who threw a tantrum like a toddler every five minutes. Honestly, I can't agree more with the observation and I can't believe Chef Ramsay actually chose to sit through the ordeal. Even before the order reached his table, I could tell that this wasn't going to be very good. Let's start with the steak, which wasn't medium rare. It's well yeah, done. There's no red, there's nothing. Just a medium rare fossil water. Yeah. Solid and dry. As for the shrimp, I would have never guessed it would turn out like this. Was he trying to do, kill me? No, but that's how he adds flavor, I guess. Despite all the butter, the dish tasted like trash. And there was only one thing Chef Ramsay could say about that. I, I've never seen anything like this. Have you given up? Kind of. Kind of. Now, this next restaurant somehow served Chef Ramsay's orders all at once. Was the famous chef impressed? Well, you'll see that his response is actually golden. Hi. Yeah, right. Close your eyes. In season 5, Chef Ramsay visited Michon's in Atlanta, Georgia. Owned by Al and Gay, the restaurant was a smokehouse that the couple purchased in 2002. They intended to pass the business on to their daughter. When Al was running the restaurant, the business was good and his smoked meat was a hit amongst the customers. Sadly, Al fell ill with a collapsed lung and had to step down to take care of his health. He eventually passed the restaurant on to Natalie, their daughter, who was also the manager. Al wanted Natalie to up her game so he could retire in peace, but Natalie wasn't the least bit interested. Since Natalie wasn't a hands-on manager, the restaurant's quality suffered and Al found himself drowning in a debt worth $200,000. Despite his deteriorating health, Al constantly monitored the CCTV footage at the restaurant since he couldn't afford to take a break. As for the food, customers seemed to send a long list of complaints to the kitchen. But sadly, nothing was done to improve the situation. When Chef Ramsay arrived for lunch, he ordered smoked chicken gourmet salad, beef brisket, pork ribs with cornbread and mashed potatoes, green and baked beans, black-eyed peas, collard greens, and mac and cheese. Ramsay also wanted to order a mashed potato salad, but he was disappointed when it was revealed that the kitchen hated to peel potatoes, so they removed that item from the menu. Phew, that was a long and exhaustive list, but would Chef Ramsay actually enjoy all of these dishes? Oh, you'll be surprised as I go over each and every one of these. The first order to be served was the smoked chicken wings. The famous chef was informed that the wings were smoked that very morning, but could you believe them? It's dry. What a shame, because it's sauce. It's lovely, but meat. It's all dry. In actuality, he was served the previous day's chicken wings, and this made him extremely disappointed. The next order to arrive was the... Oh, wait a minute. What exactly is happening here? Chef Ramsay was served all the remaining dishes in one go. Uh, God, that was quick. Holy mackerel. There you are, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome. That was really quick, right? But does that mean the food was good? Let's start with the smoked chicken salad, which Ramsay said this about. Old and sort of yucky and soggy. So gross. Looks like the chef didn't even bother with checking the vegetables before making the salad. Natalie didn't look like she cared that Chef Ramsay was served rotten food. She actually seemed to be pretty okay with it. She was like, rotten tomatoes? What's wrong with that? Next up, Chef Ramsay tried the pork ribs. And gosh, the meat looked absolutely depressing. But what did it taste like? It is dry and chewy. But it should sort of fall off the bone, but it's just dry. Now, let's move on to the cornbread, shall we? Mm. Really dry, like a mouthful of sand. How could someone mess up some cornbread? The black eyed peas were hideous. I can't believe how they messed up the simplest dish on the order. Chef Ramsay then went for the mashed potatoes, and I already don't like how they look. But did they taste better? Let's hear it from Chef Ramsay himself. Now I feel like I'm in prison, huh? That dreadful. 
As for the collard greens, they were gross, but what about the beef brisket? Dry and chewy. You could pass that for beef jerky. It's like a dog chew. If you thought Ramsay was being way too critical, wait till you see what the server had to say. What does that taste of? Nasty. That's one disastrous service. And one of Chef Ramsay's fans was gobsmacked seeing the famous chef being served pre-made food. I mean, how could anyone just throw some pre-packaged food into a microwave and serve it to the one and only Chef Ramsay? I can't agree more with this fan. That's really disrespectful and a restaurant that has the audacity to do this should be closed down. However, in this next restaurant, Chef Ramsay was served huge portion sizes. Like seriously huge. But once he started digging in, you won't believe what he found. Thank God my mom's not joining us for lunch today. <laughs> in season 4, Chef Ramsay visited Cafe Hun in Baltimore, Maryland. The cafe was opened by an entrepreneur named Denise Whiting in 1992, and because of one stupid mistake, she almost lost her entire business. If there's anything everyone should know about running a business, it's to not offend the locals. And that's exactly what Denise did. And no, when you're in Baltimore, you shouldn't mess with the hun. 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 Short for honey. Honey. Love it. To get better insight, this time, Chef Ramsay did something a little different. I'm dying to find out in terms of a reputation cafe hun. Well, Ramsay got way more than he asked for. He understood that the owner wasn't only crazy, but also headstrong, and it could be really tricky to deal with someone like that. However, when Chef Ramsay met Denise, she started to play the victim. Despite being fully aware of the situation and the reason behind why the locals had boycotted her restaurant, Denise refused to accept her faults. Now, Denise had made several rational decisions, but the worst of them all was to take over the kitchen. When Chef Ramsay sat down to scan the menu, he found the layout and print of the menu to be way too tacky. And what's more, Denise's cheesy picture on it made it even more distasteful. Hoping that the quality of the food wouldn't follow suit, Chef Ramsay ordered a Big Bay Club, English-style fish and chips, and the much better than mom's meatloaf. Sure, I just went over those orders like a breeze, but Chef Ramsay actually had a hard time ordering them. Balmer. Balmer. Ball Balmer. So it's something like Baltimore. But let's get down to the food now, shall we? When Chef Ramsay received the Big Bay Club, the first thing he noticed about it was that it was ridiculously big. I really think the restaurant chef didn't know what a good portion size was, but anyway, what the hell was in that thing? A layer of shrimp salad, a layer of long crab cake, mm -hmm. bacon, and lettuce and tomato. Chef Ramsay had a hard time trying to bite into it because how the hell could anyone shove something so big into their mouth? He had to literally break it down to bits and taste it layer by layer before he could rate the dish. When he tore the first layer off, he found the crab and surprisingly, Chef Ramsay found it to be delicious. Would the rest of the club sandwich be just as good? When Chef Ramsay started to dig in deeper, he began to find some issues. He then called the server over and told her this. This bit here, I mean, they, they taste like they're a week old. God, they're ghastly. When Ramsay asked the server to try the food, she found something really off about the whole dish as well. It kind of had a weird aftertaste and tasted like the fridge. When the server walked back to the kitchen with the feedback, Denise was surprised that Chef Ramsay had actually returned the food. But Greg, the head chef, really wasn't. He knew that the food they served was mediocre, but that was only because Denise forced her recipes onto them and wouldn't accept any feedback. And this was something that happened for a long time, but the staff only found the courage to speak up now. Denise never thinks she's wrong, and that's her biggest downfall. The next dish to come up was the fish and chips. And even before the dish left the kitchen, the chef had some serious concerns. A little dark. Nope. A little dark. It's good enough. But Denise didn't give a damn about it. According to her, they were cooked perfectly well, but Chef Ramsay didn't think so. Just by the looks of it, apart from finding the dish to be very unappetizing and having a massive portion size, the dish also looked very greasy. Chef Ramsay braved himself to try the dish, and when he did, this is what he thought of it. Fries are not even crispy, it just feels fat. As for the fish, it was dreadful. The batter was just peeling off, and the fish wasn't even cooked. I can't believe he actually tried it. But Denise was back to being in denial, and the staff? Well, they were sick and tired of her. After two disastrous dishes, would Chef Ramsay try the meatloaf or simply refuse to taste it? Ramsay normally would have passed on it, but since they claimed it was much better than mom's, Chef Ramsay was curious to see if it really was. I mean, that's a pretty bold statement to make, but I hope they live up to it. When the dish was brought to Chef Ramsay's table, it was sizzling hot. I mean, at least we know it was just made, right? But what's with those huge chunks of broccoli? 
forget about the broccoli, nothing about this dish looked appetizing at all. But what did Jeff Ramsey feel? Did he maybe like it? It's like a flamingo turd just landed on my plate. Yikes, the meatloaf was an utter disappointment. Jeff Ramsey was glad he didn't bring his mom along because what he just tasted was shameful, especially compared to the lovely food that mothers dish out from a humble setup at home. With critique after critique, Denise felt that Chef Ramsay was being ridiculous, and she started to feel like he might not be the answer to her problem after all. But that's the whole problem here. When problems came knocking at her door, Denise was so adamant that she never examined the problem. Instead, she just chose to brush it under the carpet. When Chef Ramsay went to the kitchen to give some feedback, he was in for another shock. You told them they can't season the fries. Fast food joints season fries, for God's sake. So, you could imagine how much of a control freak Denise actually was. She didn't even allow her staff to add something as basic as salt to the pan. Needless to say, Chef Greg hated following Denise's orders, but he had to do so for the sake of his job. As for Denise, she was ready to kick Chef Ramsay out, so you could imagine the plight of her staff. Should Chef Ramsay even help her? If you thought Denise was crazy, then wait till you see this next restaurant, which was run by two dysfunctional owners and a chef who was totally off his rocker. What the hell was that? In season 6, Chef Ramsay visited La Galleria 33, located in the north end of Boston, Massachusetts. Owned by sisters Rita and Lisa, this Italian family restaurant was opened in 2006. The sisters opened the restaurant right across from their father's successful restaurant called Losteria, and they hoped to draw all of the success to their side. But if only it was that easy. Given how unprofessional and disrespectful the owners were, it's no surprise that the business was very close to shutting down. Rita revealed that the head chef was her ex-husband Doe, who wasn't trained and could often be difficult. And well, that's a really bad combination if you ask me. When Chef Ramsay sat down to order, Rita hoped he wouldn't choose the seafood ravioli since it wasn't good at all. Luckily for her, Chef Ramsay ordered meatballs, veal paradiso, and chicken marcella. And to finish things off, he asked Sarah, the server, for a recommendation. And guess what she recommended? We have seafood ravioli special. Oh my god. It looks like someone was out there seeking revenge on the sisters, and what better way than to suggest the worst possible dish to Ramsay? I think she played it smart, because I mean, just look at that smile. But would Sarah's plan work? Or would the sisters be able to escape Chef Ramsay's wrath? Chef Ramsay first received the meatballs, and they tasted nothing like meatballs. Firstly, they were frozen, but not store-bought frozen. The meatballs were homemade, and then frozen for future use. So basically, they were homemade meatballs, but frozen anyway. But how did they taste though? Bland and just solid, almost like a golf ball, not nice. Well, you should know by now that Chef Ramsay's never been a fan of frozen food. Next, it was time for the veal paradiso. And well, this dish not only looked like someone took a dump on the plate, but also tasted like this. Just gnarly, overcooked, bland, gross. Next, it was time for the seafood ravioli, and this is how Chef Ramsay reacted. Disgusting, just layers of gunk, so this is special. I can't believe that after all that, Chef Ramsay was still gonna try the chicken marsala. Was he expecting it to somehow be better than the rest? For his sake, I really hope it was, but this is how it turned out. Way too sweet and just bland, no salt. After a horrible experience, Chef Ramsay wanted to finish things off with something sweet. So he ordered a tiramisu, and guess where it came from? This is my mama. Lena, nice to see you. Yep, that's the mother of the two reckless owners. And she had just brought the tiramisu from La Steria, the primary restaurant of the family. Now, let's get into how this dessert really was. When Chef Ramsay tasted it, he asked to speak with the mother. And the sisters were oddly quite happy that she too, like them, would be yelled at by Ramsay. But something totally different happened. Delicious. Huh? Oh, Delicious. Nope, Chef Ramsay wasn't just greeting her. He was so delighted that he finally got something good to eat. Now, the head chef Doug had been cooking since 1994. Though in the beginning, he did start off by showing some attitude to Chef Ramsay, Doug said that his work always got hindered by the sisters. And well, the sisters obviously denied this. I don't hold you back to do anything. Who in the hell are you talking about? Yeah, I'd really like to know. It should be evident by now, but the problem was definitely the negligent owners. However, there was an even bigger problem that Chef Ramsay was about to uncover. I just got to Chinese food sometimes. Chinese food. 
Yup, what you're looking at now is an Italian restaurant that was run by two sisters who had no knowledge or experience about the food industry and a head chef who disliked Italian food. You know what that sounds like? A catastrophe. And that's exactly what La Galleria 33 was. But nothing could beat this next restaurant where the dishes were named one thing but made of something totally different. In season 7, Chef Ramsay visited the old neighborhood in Arvada, Colorado. Yup, that was the restaurant's name by the way. So, the old neighborhood was owned by a married couple named Ramsay and Alexa who bought the restaurant 25 years ago. Both of them had several years of experience in the food industry but as servers. Was this really enough to lead a business in the right way as owners? For the first few years, the restaurant was off to a really great start. But when the number of complaints started to add up, the customers started to show a steep decline. At the time of filming this episode, the old neighborhood looked horrifyingly old. The decor looked ancient, there was a lot of clutter, the wallpapers were peeling off, and the furniture was literally falling apart. But do you know what's even worse? Well, you're about to find out. When Chef Ramsay arrived, he was greeted by a very unpleasant sight. Like, what in the world is that? Apparently, what you're looking at is Fiona, and Alexa had a personal attachment to this mannequin. In fact, she would even go as far as to change her clothing daily. That's really weird. But did she ever change what was needed? Like the menu, maybe? When asked about when the menu was last updated, Alexa and Randy came up with different answers. Finally, they settled on a time frame of about 8 to 12 months ago. In truth, it had been two and a half years since the last change, and the owners had no idea about it. Anyway, fast forward to when Chef Ramsay was ready to order, he was surprised to find a different set of menus for the lunch and dinner service. He finally settled on the New Orleans barbecue shrimp, Yucatan sea scallops, and a salmon special. However, while waiting for his food, Chef Ramsay couldn't ignore the lingering smell in the dining area, and you won't believe in your wildest dreams what it was. But the stinky upholstery was the least of the problems, and you're about to find out why. The first dish to be served was the barbecue shrimp, and Chef Ramsay found the presentation to be pretty repulsive. When asked about it, the server revealed that it was the sauce that was barbecued and not the shrimp. Chef Ramsay looked puzzled with that explanation, but he went ahead and tried it out anyway. It tasted just as bad as it looked. Poor Ramsay. But would the next dish be any better? The next order to arrive was the salmon with dill dijon cream, and apparently this was one of their specials. But actually, how special was it? Now, just because you slather everything with a ton of heavy cream on it, it doesn't mean it's going to be tasty. But who's going to explain that to Alexa, who's clearly obsessed with using a ton of cream? Anyway, are you guys ready for the final dish? When the dish arrived, Chef Ramsay had a hard time looking for the scallops. And when he did find them, this is what they tasted like. But all of these comments fell on deaf ears because Alexa had already made up her mind. And Randy thought that not only Alexa, but even his cooking was perfect. Should Chef Ramsay actually beat some sense into these deluded owners? Or should he just let them be? This was just the tip of the iceberg. There have been many more times when Chef Ramsay was served substandard food on Kitchen Nightmares, and trust me, it only gets worse.